All right, how's it going, guys? We're back, and I worked it out. I actually have had it basically right down here. I just wasn't thinking about it correctly, and I did a little video that I will put up on my Patreon, and that'll be out for my members. They should have already they will already have it before you guys see this um and i will release it as a 0.5 video to the last video um this weekend it's not anything but me just sitting here fiddling with this working this out in my head so um i'm doubting anybody's really going to care so it's not going to be a full-fledged video and i'm going to basically walk you through what i came up with here so basically what i needed to do was invert the signal coming down from the burning box as of right now we have a signal coming down that's telling us that it's not running and so everything here is saying give me ignition if we come up here we have more than 64 items so this one is on this is not lighty lit so this one is on and by the way you just take a screwdriver do that it switches it so we need that set to false then once it lights which we're going to come back up I don't know why I came down we're gonna come up we're gonna light it that's gonna turn it off so right now that would be we don't need this on so now we're going to turn that off and it's going to tell us to ignite it again because it's off but oops I forgot something all right we're going to turn this on so now it's going to say I don't need ignite I don't need lit now after a while we're going to run out of items. So that's going to turn this off, which does not change that state. And then this is going to get turned off. And when it gets turned off, it's not going to change that state. It'll only change the state of that when this then goes above again. So that is exactly what we need it to do. So the configuration was right. Torch on the input, torch on the input, torch on the output. And then just set this to false. That was the one thing I needed to do. So now we're going to hook this up. Uh, we need a emit and an accept. So now we want that's the accept. And this one might be a little tricky to get into. <clears throat> I may have to take that red wire out of there to get into this pipe. Oh, no, we got it. All right, now we connect that there. And <clears throat> come back down here. And we connect this one right there. It ignites. It does it one time. And only one time. And it's going to run. Now the other thing that I worked out. Is we need a. 
shut me the hell off because I am over pressure. We don't want it to basically start running again <clears throat> when this is getting a signal. Now, can I put an output on there and it actually detect it through the piston? This is what I need to know. So let me come up here and fill my cover. <clears throat> Use all the noise. Weather's all over the place up here again. I had a cover. All right. <clears throat> Put that there. Um, can't put that there until I open the thing. Okay, open the thing. Put that there. And lever there. <clears throat> and pop out the block. Because I don't want it to actually turn it off right now. <clears throat> What I'm wanting to see is if this is going to give us power here. So if I hit this, no. That does not send power through the piston. Well, shitballs. Right. Well, that means we either A, got to go around this pipe, or B, go through the pipe. I'm going to go through the pipe. I'm going to go there. Get one of these. One of these. And we're going to do... That's not where I told you to go. Well, it might be where I told you to go, but it's not where I wanted to tell you to go. All right, so we want except there. And we want emit there. Now, we connect this here. And that should be a dead man's, a dead switch right there. So that if we're over pressure, this cannot ignite. So for the moment, I'm going to disconnect that. I'm going to connect it there. We're going to put that light right there. That'll say... I need to ignite. So as of right now, we have this coming down. <clears throat> We're going to do that. Turn it off. <coughs> right now, it has that it needs to power. So it would be trying to turn it on. But this is on it's going to kill that. Which is exactly what we want it to do. Because if it's over pressure, we don't want it trying to ignite. Because it's just going to waste power if our piston is up and the igniter tries to run. So that is exactly what we need it to do. That is our kill switch. All right, so I should not have to be down there any longer. And we should be able to um, close this up, except for the fact that I didn't connect that wire back up. <clears throat> Give me that. No, nope, don't do that. 
that. And there we go. It just lit back up. All right, so other than covering up this big gaping hole, which I'm not too worried about the big gaping hole back there because you can't really see it. But other than covering that up, we're basically done. And now that should do everything we need it to do. And as soon as it runs again, and we get some aluminum hydroxide in here, which we should be getting if I set everything up right with the output. Oh, we gotta wait for this to run. <clears throat> as soon as that runs, we should see this one turn on. Because we should end up with more aluminum hydroxide in there. This thing is just really, really slow. Good thing is, so is this. And so is this. Come on. It's three quarters of the way done. Come on. Prove me right, baby. Show me I did all this correct. Come on, you're still at nine, damn it. There we go. It ignite. It lit. All right, and now that's going to run. <clears throat> and then it'll automatically shut off when it's done, which we are so not waiting for that because that takes forever. All right, there we go. We have now automated bauxite from... Purified after it gets washed all the way through turning it into alumnia. That is beautiful. I don't have to touch a damn bit of it. All I have to do is... Mine the ore, bring it home, shove it in the crusher, and let it run through the sluice, and then it's done. It does the rest on its own. Now, the only other issue we have to deal with, which I have a couple different things that I need to do, or that I want to do, but one of them is kind of more important than the other one at the moment. And that is, we can't run this because we're full of sulfur dioxide. And we can't run this because we're full of sulfur trioxide and this is full of sulfuric acid sulfuric acid has no way of getting rid of it we have to get rid of it at the sulfur dioxide state and there's only really two ways of doing that one is the purifying of um iron hematite to be exact, if we throw, where the hell is, 
That's molten hematite. We are so not doing molten. That's a mixer, dumbass. Okay. Hematite. Five of them. In a bath. Gives a... With hydro, hydrochloric acid. Will give us two ferric chloride and water. And a ferric chloride... In a bath. No. In a mixer. With... Sulfur, sulfur dioxide and water. Doesn't have to be distilled water. Can be regular water as well. Will then give us sulfuric acid and hydrochloric acid. But not enough hydrochloric acid to give us back what we use. Because that's only two. So I can use this to do this. And then we take the ferric chloride, we run it through a smelter, and then we run it through an electrolyzer that gives us iron and chlorine. And I don't really mind getting rid of elements because technically this chlorine eventually would be ran through a matter fabricator. But I don't have a matter fabricator. I can't make a matter fabricator. Because I can't make crystal processors yet. Um, I technically could. If I went through the stuff to do it. But we're not ready for that yet. Um, we got to get a. Well we have a laser engraver for that part. But we need 256. Which technically we could set up we have hv now but that also means i need helium and neon and helium and neon means i need neon and to get neon i need a crystal i need a cryo distillation tower and again technically we have hv power we can run one of these um, but I'm not ready for that yet. So, for right now, we're going to store our chlorine in this tank, which we should have plenty of room in here. That's hydrogen. That's chlorine. Only 46. So we got plenty of room in there to store our chlorine for the moment. So that's what I need to get working on next. So I can get rid of my sulfuric dioxide so I can run that. Now, the reason why I need to run that is because I can't get rid of the oxygen. If I can't get rid of the oxygen, I can't run the CO2. If I can't run the CO2, I'm not going to have carbon. If I don't have carbon, I can't run the electrolyzer for the alumnia. Now, technically, I can run it. I just have to get the other fluid currently. But... When I do run it, it's going to give me more CO2. So that's not going to do any good. So we also need to get the cryolite and the other one that is over here. We need to get these automated to get those fluids. And we need to get rid of that sulfur dioxide. Now, for most people you would just dump that sulfur dioxide but for me i'm picky a i want the oxygen to run my um roaster because i want the 100 percent out of the roaster not the 80 percent when i run my dust through it because you can just use air but you only get 80 percent and other people would also drop the CO2 excess. I don't want to do that either. 
I want the carbon. You need carbon for lots of things. And I don't want to have to use coal coke to make my carbon if I'm just dumping CO2 that I could be electrolyzing to get it and the oxygen I need. So that's where we're going to be headed. Um, we have 28 in there of tungsten. We've got a whole bunch of stuff in here to make. I think the next thing we're actually going to do is see if we can get a, another solar panel made and set up turning this on when we need to run our tungsten. Because right now we've got... Um, a pretty good amount of shelight in here that's going to run. But if we end up outrunning this, which I doubt we will, it's going to turn back off. And we need to be able to light this bad boy. So that might be what we do next. I'm not sure. But I guess we will find out together in the next video. So, y'all have a good one. Hope you enjoyed my automation of the um, autoclave down there. And I will see you guys next time.